What is the most RIM14 and Thesis deep thing that you have done? One time all my friends were fighting so I shared a link to the where is the love music video by the black eyed peas on my facebook page thinking they'd see it and be moved by it. LOL. That's actually cute. I literally and non-jokingly asked my mom why do I have to make my bed if all humans are meant to do is pass on their genes. We had just started biology. It hurts to remember. Well it's true, but to be successful at that task you need to attract a mate, and nobody is going to want to pass on genetic information with someone with an unmade bed. Did a MySpace photoshoot where I pretended to eat paint, but I didn't have an easel so I used the back of a frisbee, then made everything black and white except the paint, I don't remember why. Also, put edgy Marilyn Manson lyrics in my MSN plus username in blood red. Pretended to cry in my sleep at sleepovers. Then the scene years came about, and suddenly I decided I had to show the world I was the most obsessed with rubber ducks. So I told everyone I had like 80. I had to. Everyone bought me ducks for the next few years. I didn't like rubber ducks but no way in heck would I admit to lying. Pretended to cry in my sleep at sleepovers. Haha <laughs> that's hilarious. Oh man I was the singer in a band in high school and I did a ton of Jaden Smith crap. During one of our biggest shows I went on a super long rant about how people can be fake and high school was prison or something. I thought I was resonating with everyone on a big level but now my friends tell me they thought it was the stupidest crap they've ever heard to this day. I'm guessing you mean Jaden and not the linebacker. In middle school, a friend told me that she had thought of a really clever phrase, realize realize real lies. I thought it was the most deep thing to ever come out of someone's mouth and was impressed with her for creating it. A few months later I saw a post on Facebook with that exact same phrase and you could say that I realized her real lie. I recognize that from the Pink Floyd song take up thy stethoscope and walk. Fishy called a radio station and requested a maze by Lone Star to get played for an ICQ girlfriend I had that lived 4 hours away that had no way to hear the radio station lol. I was super cool. I once wrote a really angsty poem, tied it to a helium balloon and let it float away. I hoped someone far away would find it one day and marvel at how deep and mysterious I must be. Hey hun, Linkin Park lyrics just fell from the sky while I was mowing. I've recorded a lot of dumb songs in my life, I'm pretty open about sharing them all. However, there's this song I wrote when I was 16 about our high school's oppressive dean that is so unbelievably embarrassing and deep that I have nightmares about someone finding the recording of it and putting it online. Well obviously the only way to overcome your fear is to find it and put it online yourself. This older Facebook friend of mine at the time who I dadded because we were both in high school marching band, posted some of the lyrics to Boulevard of Broken Dreams. I commented with the next line of the lyrics. He commented with the next line. I promptly googled, copied, and pasted the next line of lyrics. Even though I totally knew them by heart, we kept going like this until he messaged me because I was so deep and on his level. We started dating a couple days later. Oh dear. Wrote the lyrics to Nin's happiness in slavery and magic marker on the walls of my bedroom closet in my parents house. Not exactly deep but pretty cringe. In middle school I thought I was really cool and different for being nerdy. And a girl. And so I made a private Facebook group where I posted about sci-fi movies and what to do in a zombie apocalypse etc. And to get in the group I made people do a quiz except it was all opinion questions like which is better, alien or predator and if their answer wasn't my opinion they couldn't join the group lol. Back when I was actually 14 or 15, I was obsessed with M. Night Shyamalan and his twist endings. So any English creative writing essay I did had to have a really forced twist ending. The worst was one where I was writing from a pilot's point of view, and the twist that the whole time he was one of the 9-11 hijackers, and the story ended with the crash. Wrote a song for my emo band called You Stabbed My Bleeding Heart had never even kissed a girl or had a girlfriend and had a good upper middle class suburban childhood free from depression and tragedy. Daydreamed that a shooter would come to my school and take me hostage in front of my psychology teacher, who I had a crush on. He would stare into my face and I'd stare back with a look of heartbreak and he'd just know. This is my favorite one from this thread. 
Had an AIM away message in high school that was, I must be the greatest actor in the world because everyone believes I'm happy. My profile picture in Messenger was a black and white image with text I like walking in the rain because no one knows that I'm crying. When I was in high school, during the MySpace days, I used to take many photos of random things on my digital camera, edit them in black white in certain sections except for the object being photographed and uploading them to MySpace with a deep title. Me too. Discovering the color isolation feature of my little point and shoot was the best thing to happen to 14 year old me. Cringe. Where do I start? 1. Take off all my clothes and stand in front of my bedroom window to be seen. 2. Use the word maiden and yearning in my poems. 3. Watched every single Beatles interview on YouTube and cried because no one understands. 4. Spent endless hours on chat rooms trying to heal strangers loneliness. 5. Wrote letters to boys that did so much as lend me a pencil. 6. Contributed to society through Yahoo Answers. You get the idea. Shut myself in my closet with my portable CD player, hugged my knees to my chest, and stared into nothingness, letting myself feel I don't want the world to see me by the goo goo dolls. Then I listened to it 10 more times, lip cinching along with passion occasionally crying, and I don't want the world to see me. Cause I don't think that they'd understand, when everything's made to be broken, I just want you to know who I am, yup, deep stuff, don't look at me, I'm so complex, wait do look at me, this sounds something out of an edgy 2000s teen drama. I once wrote we're all just looking for stars in the sunshine on my facebook, people commented, teasing me that the sun was a star. So of course I got to feel all smart and pretentious because that's what I meant and they just didn't understand my deep poetry. Yeah, but the sun doesn't know it's a star. Many years ago I said to a friend when it comes to the dark, you aren't afraid of what's there, you are afraid of what's not there I thought it was some profound moment. He said I was an idiot. Strangely though I was never scared of the dark after thinking that. My sister fricked me over one time when we were kids and shared a room. She was a bit scared of the dark and being a clever little crap I said but if you can't see the monster, the monster can't see you to which she then said monsters can see in the dark, idiot. When I was in 7th grade, my mom finally let me join my space. During these tumultuous, pre-hormonal years, I freaking loved Evanescence. I decided it would be really tight if my MySpace name was XX am I too lost to be saved? XX. My mom found out and threw a freaking fit. The reference, naturally, went over her head and she thought I was for sure suicidal. After the angst fueled argument in the kitchen, I stormed off to my room, waited for AOL to do its crap, and made a new and improved MySpace name. Don't try to fix me I'm not broken. Note, my profile picture was likely something rotated sideways, contrasted as frick, with some sort of batwing photobucket stickers on that crap, RIP myspace. Comma waited for AOL to do its crap, I'm just laughing at the scene of a super angsty teen waiting through the dial tone boot up, fortunately we had a different ISP so my angst wasn't delayed. When I was a 16 year old emo in 07 I was fully committed to getting a tattoo that said cut across the dotted line on my wrist. Unfortunately my brother trumped me in the deep stakes by writing song lyrics in his own blood on his bedroom ceiling. Mooom. Tell Trevor. He's not as deep as me. You're such an butthole. Trevor. In middle school, me and two of my closest friends decided to start a journal. Each had their own, in which we would write terribly cringy poems, song verses, random quotes we thought were deep and bad doodles every night before going to bed. This went on for about two years and we sometimes even email each other our rough drafts for revision or just to show off when we were very proud of a particular piece. Nearly a decade later, we still occasionally stumble upon our old journals or emails and Jesus, saying they are bad is an understatement. That's really sweet. I wrote all the lyrics to some Slipknot song and gave it to my mom because that's what you get when you take away my PlayStation. I push my fingers into my eyes. When I was a freshman in high school I had a crush on a gothy senior and wrote a poem called Mirror Image because I thought we were so much alike. She read it, she cried, and was yelling what does this mean to the air as her friend took her away to calm down. That was a good sign, right? 
I told myself. I need to hear the rest of this story immediately. I set up a whole bunch of candles and incense. I made myself a pot of horrible blackberry tea. I wanted to meditate but didn't know what to say. My parents walked in, stared for about 3 seconds and just cracked up. They were laughing so hard they struggled to close the door. Plot twist. Your parents were stoned. When I was 16 I had a pretty bad breakup and decided to hoe my way through it and basically had a mantra of I don't like boys. I frick them if that weren't bad enough on its own. I couldn't exactly say the second half of that mantra around adults so I ended up saying I don't like boys. A lot and I was absolutely oblivious that I was making the adults in my life question my sexuality. At least she won't get pregnant your parents were thinking. When I was a kid, like 12 or 13, I was given an IQ test. I used to quote the score to people. Makes me want to simultaneously projectile vomit and punch the younger version of me in the freaking face. I once answered a thread with I guess Einstein didn't know about the curse of knowledge. It's literally the only post I have ever deleted on this website. And now we all know about it. I told a boy that wanted to go out with me that I was afraid that I would never love again after having had my heart broken, and that I needed to find myself. There was quite a bit more dramatic, so popular terminology in this little speech, and he bought it. Hook, line and sinker because he apparently lived in the same mental soap opera. Got my first girlfriend at about 14. Her name was Layla. I listened to Eric Clapton's Layla, and only Eric Clapton's Layla. Non-stop for that entire week. Because that's what you do when you're in love, right? Still can't listen to that song without feeling like an idiot. This is kinda adorable Mayo. Messaged a radio show indignantly after they discussed Lost and made fun of some aspects I forget. In order to tell them all about the theories people were weaving on the internet and why all that stuff could make sense. It was so ridiculous and extra that they read it on the air. Boy did Lost show me later. Went abroad for a year when I was 15-16, was given a notebook time capsule thing in the first month to write my thoughts hopes etc. Down on so that I could be shown them again at the end of my stay 11 months later. I wrote something along the lines of none of this matters in the center of the page and then gave it to the supervisor to be put away. When I got it back at the end of the year, I hadn't remembered what I'd written. So I was actually quite excited to open up the book. Instant disappointment. Congratulations, you played yourself. I used to get really full of myself because I listened to older rock bands like Led Zeppelin and Van Halen and acted like I was the only teenager in the world that did. Still love all of those bands. Every YouTube comment section on every song more than 10 years old is absolutely teeming with these teenagers. I used to get dressed in my Halloween costume which was an old fashioned ladies dress and stand on the balcony and cry because I knew I would never meet my true love, who was in Russia at the time. I was 14. I just laughed out loud. Oh man I loved in Russia. Once I said to my father, the biggest pain for women is to give birth, for men is to go to war. And he was like, yup, I don't know what to do with that information. Just thinking about a summer I had, I had helped a friend with a breakup so I started thinking I was a legit psychologist and attempting to treat any I deemed as repressing something. When I was 13 stroke 14, I was the new kid in school and bullied a lot, getting called an emo dyke a lot, not entirely wrong, but I'm being didn't like their tone, so I decided if anyone was going to label me, I was, so I started wearing vegetable can wrappers as armbands. I still want to die at the thought. I love how this suggests that it was a completely natural and logical line of thought. In 10th grade I wore a hood and never walked properly with the class. Egg. I'd walk in the ditch if we were walking somewhere. I thought I'd be mysterious and deep showing that I'm a special snowflake. To make it even worse I tried getting reputation as a psychopath which I did by talking about bombs and terrorists every conversation and being generally edgy. If you were doing it now in America you could be on the what list. Definitely my edgy atheist phase when I was 15. I started a presentation with if you aren't comfortable with Christianity being talked about in a negative light you can leave the room now. Ah frick. 
When I was a preteen I had this quote about how the world turned its back on me so I will turn my back on the world. Like honey, please, you sing songs from the Lion King almost every day, you are not a badass. Back when I was literally 14 my best friend, at the time, and I tried to start this movement where instead of cutting, when we felt that urge we write a word on our arm that felt significant to us. It was based on the idea that the pen is mightier than the sword. Her first word was tree. I think mine was family. I was telling my brother quotes cause he is slightly depressed and he told me about the subreddit and I've never felt so offended in my life. While you may have been offended I bet it cheered your brother up a little. When I was in 6th or 7th grade I printed out a picture of a black rose with the caption the life your child leads is not the one you want them to let and taped it to my door. I thought it was super deep and meaningful, because I'm a stook my parents want me to get good grades so I can be successful with my parents are trying to take control of my life, they never gave me crap for it, though they were appropriately puzzled when I put it up, I kinda cringe at the edginess when I think about it now. Additionally, once my mom took my computer because I was giving her an attitude and I took my iPod outside and blasted Linkin Park while I sulked, I was a really lame tween. This entire thread reminds me of my brother, my 40 year old brother, every freaking word, I need to have a talk with him. I recently came across poetry that I actually wrote when I was 14, it wasn't actually all that deep, but by god it tried. You can't say this and not show us the poem, come on. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe, I publish new videos every day, until then, check another video. Bye for now.